Hello YouTube, it's me John Avenger once again and welcome back to Rotten Tomatoes Month and boy do I have one for you tonight. It is a 2015 movie, action sci-fi space opera. No, I promise I'm not doing a rant on, on uh, Last Failure because that, that didn't get a rotten so it's safe for now. But this is a horribly executed movie from 2015 that was supposed to come out in the summer of 2014 and that is the Wachowskis' Jupiter Ascending. Yeah, this movie hurts, so let me let me take it all in. It came out in February of 2015, right before Eddie Redmayne won an Oscar. He would have lost the Oscar if this movie had come out like, like the same day as the Oscars. Because, oh my god, he's horrible in this movie. Everybody is miscast here like crazy. Let me get some water because this is going to be a long one. So let me get this straight. The Wachowskis go from doing The Matrix, one of the most respected sci-fi action movies of the last 20 years. And then they do this. Granted, this movie's original. It's not based on a comic. It's not based on a book. It's not based on a TV show. It's not based on a cartoon. It's an original story. But good God, this movie has no freaking plot. You know, let me tell you the, the semblance of a plot that we have here. A cleaning lady, Mila Kunis, is supposed to be a princess, winkity wink wink, that from another planet that these people want to like join these planets together and farm her eggs or something. I don't know. It's very convoluted. And Channing Tatum plays a half man, half dog breed, and uh, you know, or wolf or whatever. I, I think he's a wolf or a dog. And he has, like, big ears, and he glides on a freaking... He has, like, hover skates, and it's ridiculous. Like, the, the, the movie... I'll say these good things about the film. The film has a budget. The, the special effects are mostly well done for the most part. And the, the film has some decent ideas here and there, but it's wasted on a shitty script. Horrible direction by the Wachowskis. These guys wish that they were the Russo brothers because they're making a killing. They just made that epic space opera right there. Avengers Infinity War, and they did Civil War and, Infin and Winter Soldier. And this movie, a 26% of Rotten Tomatoes, so it counts. This movie is one of the worst films I saw in 2015. If you thought The Force Awakens was a big slap in the face, take a look at this shit. This is how you do it in all the wrong ways. That movie sucked because it's called Star Wars, and it was all about an agenda. This is a sci-fi movie that could have been like a Star Wars, but it falls completely flat. Yeah, it's soulless. The movie is way too long. It feels like it's two and a half hours. It was an hour and 55 minutes, but it feels way too long. Uh, you know, Mila Kunis is not a good character. She's as weak as, as freaking tartar sauce. She, the whole movie, she has to be saved by Channing Tatum. Where have I seen that before? And Channing Tatum, yeah, his character, he's trying, but he doesn't have much to his character. He's very generic. He has a cool look, and he does a lot. He does a lot of the action sequences because Mila Kunis can't act to save her life in this movie. She's like, oh, I love dogs. I'm a cleaning lady. The whole freaking movie, she's like that. She doesn't have an ounce of emotion on her face. She has the same boring-ass look. The best thing she ever did was Meg on, on Family Guy and some episodes of That, so, uh, that 70s Show. But other than TV, her movies suck. Like, a lot of the films she's in, she's just horrible. Like... Horribly miscast in everything she's in and just has bug eyes and just nothing. And you know how you know how people that can, can sense royalty? Let me say how stupid this sounds. Sean Bean talks to her and then he finds out that he's she's royalty by the bees. The bees. Not Wasp from, from Ant-Man and Wasp. The bees. Nicolas Cage. Oh, not the bees. Ah! Yeah, the bees. The bees know that she's royalty because they can, like, sense her essence. I'm like, what sense does that make? They can sense her royalty? She's a freaking cleaning lady to cleaning toilets in the beginning of the movie and does the same thing at the end so she has no growth. Gee, where have I heard that before? Winkity wink. And I, I don't mean Princess Leia. You know who I mean. But, yeah. The film is so convoluted, like they're trying to sell her eggs to make a profit because her family's poor, and uh, and freaking Eddie Redmayne is, oh my god, this guy is overacting his ass off. I can forgive Michael Shannon in Man of Steel, I will say that. If Sean sees this video, 
I can forgive Michael Shannon because at least in Fahrenheit 451, in that movie, he was giving a decent performance. And at least when he overacts, I can laugh. Here, this is way too hammy. This is like ham on rye. Eddie Redmayne, this is how he talks in half the movie. He's like, I will hold you accountable. And then he just yells out of nowhere. He's like, I created life! And I'm like, oh. Oh my god, he is so freaking terrible. And then, I will take it away. I'm glad that he did not perform like this in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Because I'm like, please don't suck. Please don't suck. Please don't suck. You're a prequel to Harry Potter. Please don't suck. And he was good because he was interesting. And he was different from Harry Potter. Here, he's overacting. He's screaming at a bunch of CGI creatures like dragons and dog faces and freaking cat ladies. And I don't know. It looks like The Last Jedi on acid. And there's a scene where there's th this is the first movie I've seen in a long time that's PG-13 that has unnecessary nudity in it. Believe me, I'm not going to complain if I see a grown woman naked in a film that's not porn. I'm not going to, like in, in Fifty Shades of Grey, I'm not going to complain about Dakota Johnson's skin, bare skin. But here it's blatant because it's like a woman is walking into a bath, uh, into like this fountain of youth, and she comes out naked. And I'm like, you know this is a PG-13, right? Kids are going to see a bare woman's ass on screen. I'm like, how dare you, Wachowskis? I didn't have to see Carrie Ann Moss naked in the in the second Matrix. Not a problem. I mean, she's a beautiful woman. But here, there are so many Brits in this movie. And they're not even the biggest problem with the movie. They, Yeah, they suck. Eddie remains over the top. The freaking lady that walks into the into the fountain of youth, she sucks. Uh, the guy that wants to marry Mila Kunis, who happens to be her mother from another freaking thing. Again, I've seen that already. I've seen the the slight incestual thing. I also saw that in Back to the Future. He wants to bury his mother so that they they're they're you know their clans can for, could come together and you know stop this war again. Even though it's it's an original story, it's still stealing stuff from superior movies. And uh, again, like everybody, there's a guy with you know with a Russian accent, and there's a guy with like an Australian accent, and people with British accents. I think Terry Gilliam makes a cameo in the movie. He's one of the guys where basically remember the scene in The Force Awakens when that. When useless cancer face is talking to Simon Pegg's characters like, I give you half portions. They do that same scene in this movie. So this movie ripped that off. Even though, because this movie was supposed to come out a year before. It literally is Terry Gilliam makes a cameo and he, he it looks like like the movie Brazil. And he's like talking to Mila Kunis and, and, and I think uh, Channing Tatum. And like it, it's a scene that goes nowhere, but there's some visual things that are pretty good in the film. Like some of the makeup. But like I said, it's a wasted opportunity. This movie just freaking crash landed on its face. I can forgive the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies and beyond because at least those movies had a point. This film doesn't. It's like it wants to be so many different things and it deserved to tank at the box office. It got critically panned. It was considered, it was on Watch Mojo's list of the worst two movies of 2015. I could not agree with them anymore if I tried because I'm like, it's a wasted opportunity. If you had Emma Stone in the lead instead of Mila Kunis' Bug Eyes and you had a better script and you got rid of the Wachowskis and they just produced a movie and you tw tweaked the, the story a bit and made it shorter, this movie would have been a guilty pleasure for me. But it's ungodly boring. I was bored. Every time there's no action, it's like there's nothing happening. It's just people talking in that pretentious bullshit Game of Thrones kind of way. Like they're talking like they're being doing great art and they're in freaking high art and i'm like no get out of here you know get out of here with your freaking pretentious acting this movie just it sucks there's a scene where literally mila kunis gets fooled by these people in the in the hospital and she's in a bat in a, in a and she's in a in a what was it like a gown like a like a hospital gown where when they do surgery on people and they're literally they turn into these aliens and i'm like then they're gonna like probe her or some shit i i don't know they mostly want to kill her. Again, I saw that in Attack of the Clones. Not with aliens, but where people were trying to kill the queen, uh, Senator Amidala. I saw that already, Wachowskis. Again, there's some things you did that were right, that were cool, like some of the visual stuff. But And the film has great cinematography. But again, your story makes no freaking sense. And a lot of it is stuff I've seen in something superior. I would take any of the Star Wars prequels over this, because those have... 
amazing visual effects. They have a better story. The characters are fleshed out. Pa uh, you know, say what you will about Natalie Portman. She's not bug eyes. She's not like this for the whole freaking movie. Literally, the, the eyes. No, that's too much emotion. She's like this. Yeah, because this, this is emotion. This is actually showing eye, eye you know, contact. Here, she's like, bug eyes. And I swear, she does one thing at the end. One freaking thing. Like, when the shit goes down and there's a final battle, she, like, hits somebody with a freaking... She hits Eddie Redmayne, and then she hits... And then she uses, like, a, a gun or something. I, I don't know. But it, it's just too little too late. I'm like, you can't make a female badass out of this character now because she's boring and flat. Just like Bella Swan was in the Twilight movies. Just like your precious cancer face in The Force Awakens and Last Failure. They learn nothing. They get nothing. And even the costumes that they have for her, like they put like flowers in her hair and they make her look like Padme Amidala. Again, you're ripping off something superior. Yeah. And Eddie Redmayne's acting is just so atrocious. Like he, he cannot save this movie with his acting. If you see this movie, guys, you're going to laugh your asses off at how bad he is. This is what happens when you take a Oscar winning actor that won for the theory of everything where he had to work with, with beaver teeth from, from Rogue One. And he had to make that look good. And he was playing uh, Stephen Hawkins, who just recently passed away. So rest in peace, Stephen Hawkins. But anyway, yeah, this guy can act. I've seen him act. And he's a Brit. But he can act. Unlike Beaver Teeth and t and Cancer Face and freaking uh, uh, Amelia Clark in, in, in Brolo. Yeah, this guy actually can act. He won an Oscar for it. For playing, hello, I am Stephen Hawkins. I created this new thing so I can talk to you people. And like... That's cool. He actually played a disabled and he won an Oscar for it. What is this? What has Mila Kunis done? A couple of decent TV shows, voice acting in, in Family Guy, which is fine because you don't see her face. And she did shitty movies like Max Payne and this movie. And I think she was in Ted, which I heard was funny, but she's not funny in it. That's why the second movie they got rid of her. And yeah, and she did American Psycho 2. Yeah, get out of my face. She was better when she was like a little girl. Back in the 90s. I mean, at least she was cute back then. Now, her big bug eyes don't save it. I guarantee you, the Spine Who Dumped Me is going to flop in the summer. I, she This flopped, so will the Spine Who Dumped Me with her and, and lesbo Kate McKinnon. Yeah, it's not going to do well. But like I said, you know, you have to have an interesting female lead. If she's boring for two hours, almost two hours, and is a freaking cleaning lady and doesn't learn anything at the end, she's basically in the same spot she was in when she started. That's not a character growth. That's stagnant. That's a good word, stagnant. You stay in the same place that you did when you started. But anyway, Jupiter Ascending is a piece of shit. It sucks. It was one of the worst I saw in 2015. I think it's worse than The Force Awakens because it had more potential. This was not a sequel. This was not a comic book movie. This was not a freaking movie based on a novel. It's a big... Wasted chance for the Wachowskis to redeem themselves, and they still haven't done it. This film just sucked. It has no build up; like the characters are flat. It's boring. It's nice to look at. It's a good, like this would have been a, a decent short film to look at, but it's not. It's just dull. Like Blade Runner twenty forty nine had great ideas and a great leading man and fantastic freaking visuals, and the story was interesting. This is just. Flat tap water of cinema. And there's a reason the Wachowskis are forgotten now. And now they are they change their genders or whatever. The Brussos have more balls than you. Wank. Anyway, yeah, this movie is horrible. So just don't want... If you want to get a good laugh at Eddie Remain's overacting, his, his version of Zod from Man of Steel, this is way freaking worse. This got him a Razzie nomination. At least Shannon, while I was not a fan of that movie, I was not a fan of his performance... At least he tried. And there's some moments where he's not yelling. At the very least. Here, Eddie Redmayne's like, I'm whispering. And then he's yelling like this! And I'm like, no. Fuck you. Stop trying to be like Christian Bale in this movie, Redmayne. You you could do better than this. At least in Fantastic Beasts, you redeemed yourself. Because he's subtle. He's shy. He's a very reserved character. And when he gets a little crazy, he's not yelling like, like to the sky. Again, stop yelling on cinema. It's not epic. It's just painful. Did you see Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End? Where 
Kira Knightley's doing nothing but overacting and screaming at the camera for 30 minutes. That shit hurt me inside. And this did too. Well, granted, Mila Kunis doesn't really yell in the movie. It's Redman who does that, but it's just painful to watch. It's just a waste of a, of a freaking decent idea. And I hate this movie. It's freaking terrible. It deserved a critical, bad critical notice. It's 26%. Almost the same as Suicide Squad. Those boobies both suck. They both have bad characters. They, they have annoying annoying moments. The films have a convoluted plot that should have been that should have been that is like a bunch of video game cutscenes strung together and just no. Badly directed. Just this is badly directed. I see the Matrix and Matrix Reloaded. I'm like, that's when the Wachowskis gave a shit, at least visually, and they had decent characters. Here, all you got is Channing Tatum. That's all you have. The rest of the cast, I don't remember who they are. You have Sean Bean in the movie. He's barely in it. And freaking bees, CGI bees can recognize royalty. Imagine if they did that shit in the, in, in the Phantom Menace. That Queen Amidala, a bunch of bees are flying in her face. It, like it, 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 when she was in Tatooine, that a bunch of bees fly to her. And they said, hey, wait a minute. They're flying to her. Maybe she's royalty. That would be stupid. It makes no freaking sense. Bees. Bees can't sense people what people's blood. That's what mosquitoes do. Not freaking bees. They make honey and, and pollinate flowers. They don't freaking smell blood. What the hell is wrong with you, Wachowskis? Were you high when you came up with this movie? You probably were, both of you. Doing all your cocaine money from The Matrix. Good God, this movie is horrible. Like, don't see this Jupiter Ascending. Just skip it. Just see, go see Cowboys and Aliens. Go see the Star Wars prequels. Go see the original Star Wars. Hell, go see Guardians of the Galaxy. That's how you do a great freaking sci-fi opera, you know, freaking uh, uh, action-adventure sci-fi movie in space with great characters and great freaking a great story and humor. This movie, I other than Redmayne's yelling, there's no really any jokes in the movie except I like dogs. That's it. Ha ha. I have a dog. I, it's not that funny here. Anyway... Thanks for watching, guys. I know I'm going to get to the kickboxer movies, but I'm only reviewing the first two for that guy on YouTube that wanted me to do that. I'm going to do it sometime this week, but I wanted to get this out of the way because this movie needs to be... It, 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 not, it doesn't need to be seen to be believed. Just believe what I say that it's horrible. There's a reason that it's hard to find this movie on Blu-ray in stores because it's, it's a travesty. It could have been something, and it failed. See you guys in the next video. Take care. Watch this video. Share it on Facebook and YouTube and, and Twitter and Google Hang Google Plus, whatever. Just, yeah. it's th This movie's just, it, it's a stinker. It was one of the worst of 2015. It would have been one of the worst of 2014. But it got delayed and it deserved to bomb. No sequels for you, Jupiter Ascending. Later.